slavery does exist. It is real. Um, it is a huge issue. It's not to scare anybody. It's just the truth. And then I also want them to know God is bigger than that. This is the fight. Human trafficking is the fastest growing criminal industry in the whole world. I just read a press release that they estimate $150 billion a year. $150 billion is made um, through modern day slavery. Knowing that there is an estimated 30 to 36 million people around the world that are trapped in this. It's so important for us to understand uh, this is real. It's not we're in the Shenandoah Valley and it's beautiful and it's safe and it can't be us and it can't be our children. That is a lie. You know, every child, every person has a target when they're back. Yeah, sure. We're actually um, a faith-based nonprofit. We are located here in Harrisonburg, Virginia. We are an anti-human trafficking movement, so we do a lot of collaboration with other organizations, both here in our country and then internationally. Yeah, I think, I guess I feel like, you know, there's so many, there's so many issues in the world and we go to conferences and hear about homelessness and poverty and just all the different things that um, are happening in our world that we can be involved in and they're great causes, but I believe that God lays a specific cause on your heart. I remember from a young age, um, learning about slavery in the 1800s broke my heart. I remember thinking, what would I do? You know, if I had lived in that time, what would I have done to make a difference? And so when we learned that it was happening, we had no idea that slavery still existed. My husband and I were completely oblivious to the fact that it was happening anywhere. You know, we learned that it was happening in Uganda, but when we heard that it was happening here in our country, in our city, we thought, you know, we ask ourselves, what would we have done, but what are we going to do now? So I think a lot of it's just God laid it on my heart. Um, the other part of that is sexual violence against women has always been something that has been a cause dear to my heart. Um, it's affected my family. I have friends that have been just the victim of that. So I think that combined with this passion to fight injustice was this perfect um, just this perfect collaboration that God kind of put on my heart. So, um, you know, human trafficking is kind of a, there's a lot of different levels to trafficking. You know, sex trafficking is specifically what we are fighting, but there's labor trafficking and, and bonded labor that happens. But what we saw with sex trafficking was the connection between pornography and the sex trade. Again, we were so oblivious to that in our culture. It's so mainstream, you know, um, TV, you turn on almost any television and it's almost pornography, it's in our music, um, it's in our books. So I think it was just a real clear picture of, hey, this thing that we're, we think is okay, pornography that we're participating within our house and our living room, it's only hurting me. And we really wanted to send the message, no, it's fueling something much bigger than we can even imagine. So that was kind of one of the reasons that we kind of thought, hey, it'd be really cool if we could take this terrible property and make it something awesome. But also, like I mentioned, we're Christ-focused, and who Jesus is is, you know, he's the king of redemption. And so we saw it as a tangible way to send a message of you're never too far gone. There's nothing that we can do that will leave us unredeemable, this property. The first time I mentioned, you know, I think, I think God told me we're supposed to buy this. Somebody said that building just needs to be burned down. You know, it's completely too far gone. It's such a waste. And 
I took it so personal. Um, to me, it wasn't a building. You know, it's, it's a picture of who we see these girls, these lives that have kind of been stolen into trafficking. Um, from the outside looking in, they look unredeemable. Their situation looks too far gone, um, but God never sees us that way. So the building is, we call it our redemption story. Um, it's something that has completely changed my life, being there, watching, you know, when we walked in, it was wallpapered with pornography. Um, we bought it as is, and we really didn't know what that looked like. And I remember the first day walking in, and floor to ceiling is these pictures of girls. And I know their stories, you know. I know the truth behind pornography. And so when I saw that, it was terribly hard. And then we had a group of kids come called um, Renew. And, of course, we removed all the pornographic images before they got there, but... When I came back after the week they had been there, instead of seeing nude images, there were words of encouragement and scripture and, you know, God's truth was floor to ceiling. And so it's just the things that have happened in that building, I would never have thought. We thought we're going to make a we're going to make a statement that we stand against pornography. We're going to make a statement um, on redemption. But I don't think I realized just how deeply it's touched my life and the lives of people that have been a part of it. It really touched my heart when we, we bought the building. We actually had a lot of people who continued to come and try to buy pornography, um, which made me very uncomfortable because I was there by myself some. And so we, we had this idea, let's put redeemed across the sign to just send the message that this is a new location. This is, not a, this is no longer um, a pornography shop. And it was just for protection, really. Mm -hmm. And we have had so many emails of that sign gave me goosebumps. You know, mm -hmm. I had to pull over. It made me cry. And then my favorite email was actually from Pamela herself. She started that shop, I think, probably in the early 90s. Um, she later sold it, so she hasn't owned it for, for years. But she said that she was driving down the road with her grandchildren, and they pointed out, the redeemed banner across her sign and she said I know that that was God sending me a sign that my life had been redeemed. Okay. Can you explain where all the proceeds go to? Yeah sure in our new creation shop 50 to 70 percent of the proceeds go back to the girls that made them so you know if you're buying Sac Psalm which is from Cambodia 50 percent is going back to the girls that actually made it. What that cost covers, you know, the, the cost of the materials, obviously, but more than that, um, they are educating these women. They are not only educating them, but sharing the gospel of who Jesus is. They're feeding them. They're housing them. So when people are buying from our shop, they're actually supporting a great cause. The other thing that's really important to understand with girls that have been rescued from sex trafficking Providing a next step is huge. You know, obviously we want to rescue um, these women from this lifestyle, but what we really want to do is see them spiritually renewed, um, physically and mentally renewed, and then provide them, how am I going to take care of myself? A lot of what we see is if they're not provided a next step, even after they're rescued, they can end up back in the sex trade. So new creation our hope is to be a next step through the purchasing of their products. We can secure their future. We can give them a new start. We can give them a means to provide for themselves and their families. Um, so that's kind of our business structure is your purchase is directly affecting, not indirectly, you're directly affecting lives um, of girls that, that now have a future because of your purchase. That's awesome. Um, you know, I think, I think what I, I want people to know, obviously, it's great for people to know who we are. It's very important, but it's more important for people to be aware of the epidemic of what mm -hmm. human trafficking is. Uh, it's important for people to educate themselves. We have some of the truths of trafficking on our website 
There's so many resources out there for people to get their hands on. So it's very important that people start looking into this epidemic. They start saying, okay, let me look at my life. How am I contributing to the issue? Um, am I a part of the issue? So I think, yes, I want people to know who New Creation is. But more than that, I want people to know slavery does exist. It is real. Um, it is a huge issue. It's not to scare anybody. It's just the truth. And then I also want them to know God is bigger than that. You know, this, this is not bigger than who he is. He has the key to the, an you know, he has the answer to the problem. And I think the key is you and me and, and what are we going to do? So, um, yeah, that's what I want people to know.